Welcome to Butterflies of Wisdom, everyone. This afternoon, I have Rocky with me, and I'm going to let Rocky take it away. Well, thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be on your show, and I look forward to talking to you and your guest. Well, thank you. And I want to ask you, Rocky, what do you do, and can you explain that a little bit more to my audience. Well, absolutely. So uh, I uh, worked for UPS for 36 years, started working for UPS uh, June 15, 1976, uh, as an unloader, part-time loader-unloader as I was working my way through college. I attended St. John's University in New York, which at that time was predominantly a commuter college, and it was a way for me to pay my way through school. And I was fortunate that UPS had a promotion from within policy and was able to work my way up through the organization. And so uh spent 36 years there at UPS. Uh, my dad, when I started the job, told me two things that stuck with me throughout my career that helped me not only at UPS, but it's helped me throughout my career in adult life. And that's he told me two things. He said, whatever they ask you to do, say yes and then thank you, and then learn your job and then learn some more. So don't ever think that you've got – a complete set of knowledge or that you've learned everything, every day is a, is a new opportunity to learn some more and to learn your job and learn some more. And so with that in mind, as I progressed through UPS and opportunities were presented to me, even though I may not have felt as, as ready as I could be or should be or maybe not as confident, I always thought what my dad say, say yes and thank you. And so I accepted those responsibilities, moved across the country with my wife and four kids. We've moved uh, – uh, nine times total, and uh, in such places, uh, we started in New Jersey, we were in Chicago, New York City, Syracuse, Des Moines, Iowa, Southern California, Atlanta, Philly, and I ended my career in Atlanta. So those are all opportunities presented me. For me, which was a little unique with my UPS uh, career was that as UPS was going through acquisitions, I, I was for, I had the opportunity to work with the companies that were acquired and integrate them into UPS and help them become part of the UPS family, and then actually had the chance to learn those those business units and they became direct res, uh, responsibilities to me. So, for example, when we purchased mailboxes, etc., and then rebranded to the UPS store, I got a chance to work with some wonderful franchisees. Uh, the UPS store network is 100% franchisee owned, so I got a chance to really. Uh, under, not understand, but, you know, get a chance to really work with entrepreneurs, wonderful, wonderful people who are really all in. They take all of their savings and kind of slide it across the table and say, hey, I'm all in. I'm going to buy a franchise. So that was a great opportunity for me to learn from them uh, and, and learn what's it like to be an entrepreneur. And then uh, we went through a series of acquisitions and built with today UPS Supply Chain Solutions, and I had a chance to participate in that and run this side of the world for UPS. I finished my career and then uh, was recruited to be the CEO of a telecom, small telecom company in Pennsylvania. We did that, did that for three and a half years. Uh, we sold it to private equity. And now uh, I thought, well, I have way too much energy and enthusiasm. So I thought, well, let's start my own company as I learned from the entrepreneurs at the UPS store. And we started 360 Management Services about just short of two years ago. And 360 has three principal kind of legs of its stool. One is the public speaking, keynote speaking, which I do. In fact, I have a conference next week in Las Vegas that I'm a keynote speaker at. There's leadership training, and I'm also doing some training next week in Vegas. Uh, I have uh, leadership training that we're doing, and so I really really like that, enjoy that. And then the third leg of our stool is uh, process improvement, uh, more of a traditional consulting side of the business, and we are currently in two engagements right now. So that's the 360 management. That's what I'm doing now. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah. Yeah, busy. Yeah, Rocky. Yeah. Well, well, I say busy. You well, my, lead my, my a very interesting life. You lead a very interesting life, and the part I love is the UPS part because you work your way up to UPS. As my listeners know, I'm getting a journalism degree, so I'm working my way up in the journalism ranks. But the reason why I wanted to bring Rocky on the podcast is to not only answer my baseline questions, but to talk about leadership. And I think you um, bring up a good point, Rocky, 
is that you have to work your way up and say yes and thank you and just be a bu- bubblehead when it comes to challenges and ask for help. I'm sure you did that in the uh, UPS. We are asking, how do you do this? How do you load a truck properly? How do you address a package properly? Because I know UPS has its standards. And so asking for help is not a sign of weakness. Well, I agree. I agree 100% with you. But I also think there's one other very, very important but subtle thing that happens that I learned from my days at UPS that I think is so important and it's such an important skill for leaders going forward. UPS believed in Rocky Romanello well before Rocky Romanello believed in Rocky Romanello. And that that happens often in the evolution of a person or a company that you as a leader have to believe in many, many times in your people ahead of when they're ready to believe in themselves. So you, you kind of carry them with the confidence. You kind of help them. You bridge that confidence gap until they get the experience and get the knowledge and get that confidence. So leaders, you know, are charged with that responsibility to believe in their people until their people are ready to believe in themselves. And I think, all too often, as a leader, you sometimes take a person that wants to do some more, wants to learn more, and, and you think, well, I'm going to, you know, let them go. Well, while that may sound good, at the end of the day, they need successes to gain confidence. And so whatever you can do to help them gain successes, help them feel good about themselves, help them understand their role and responsibility, especially in the early days when when they're kind of getting their feet wet, not really quite sure, you know, what good looks like and what they're supposed to do. And so I think that's such an important lesson I learned, that UPS believed in me until I was ready to believe in myself. And going forward, I had that responsibility to my people to believe in them until they were ready to believe in themselves. Awesome stuff. Awesome stuff. Because UPS, we're not talking about a small company, you know, we're talking about a huge company, and the fact that you had a great career at um, UPS, that's unbelievable, and kept your job for how many years? Did you say 39 or something ridiculous like that? Yeah, 36 years, yep. Started up unloading. 36 years. 36 years, yep. Wow. Wow. And so basically... What would you say to the new UPS driver who's scared to do this, um, who's quite, or anyone who's new in a part-time job and they're scared out of their mind? Well, I think it's it's not unique to UPS. I think it's it's – new situations in general, right? It, it's difficult, right? Because you're starting new, you you don't understand your role, you may not understand your responsibility and what part you play. And so I think what's important is that you're open-minded, that you're willing, I think you said it uh, best, you're willing to ask questions. You're you, you willing to take advice from not only the people who work with you, or, or work, the people that you work for, but also the people you work with, right? There's key, there's key peers that are out there that are very, very good at what they do. I mean, I always sought out the, you know, person with the most seniority and who's, who, you know, has done the job for 25, 30 years and is very, very good at it. And, and to me, you know, I would try to pick their brains and, you know, how did you do this, you know, because they went through the same mistakes we went through that I was going through as a new person. They just had been there many years before. And, and frankly, you know, the vast majority of people want to help other people. They want to see other people be successful. And so I think if you take that humble approach and you're open to learning from not only the person you're working for but your peers – I think that just goes a, such a long way, and you'll learn so much. You're getting different views. You're getting different looks at it. But at the end of the day, you know, these are the people that do the job, do it well, and they can help you. And I think that's that openness and willingness to learn is so important. Now, that being said, openness and willingness to learn, I um, 
had a situation this morning where um, the people are believing me, actually, two second situations. They're believing me in one situation and giving me a second chance, not to say that I didn't screw up on my homework, but I didn't do what the teacher expected of me because this was my first time doing this since high school, so it's been a while, so I'm grateful for that second chance, and the reason why I bring that in to this um, interview is because what if people screw up? Should they go look for the second chances, lucky, or should they just admit their fault? Well, I think, you know, when it comes to, look, we're all human beings, we're going to make mistakes. I think what the question I would always look at and the question I would always try to determine is, is it, is it I don't know or I didn't want to? If I didn't want to do it, if somebody does not want to do something or made a a conscious decision that I'm not going to do it, well, then there's consequences for that decision. If a person tried their best or wanted to do it but just didn't have the knowledge, the confidence uh, to do it, well, then, you know what, that's when you give them a lifeline. That's when you say, well, look, let's work on this together. You know, in the, in the future, I hope you have the confidence or you feel comfortable enough with me. They'll come and ask me before it gets to this point. But, look, your intentions were good. You wanted to do the right things. It just didn't work out. Let me help you. So that's a different, that's a different situation. But I think if a person makes a conscious decision not to do something, well, then that's a different issue then. I mean, that's, that's saying, okay, well, you made a choice. And there's consequences to the decisions you make. As a leader, you're getting evaluated on the decisions that you make. If I've made a decision not to do something or not to follow a, a, a you know, a process or not to follow, you know, you know, something that's, you know, in our handbook or something like that, well, that's a different circumstance. I made a conscious decision. There's consequences to those decisions. Yeah. So I think that those are two different things. So I think you put them into, you know, you know, I made a decision not to do it, or I need, or I, or I don't know how to do it. If you, those are two different things. I think you have to that you start there first, I believe. Yeah, you start with either I made the decision not to do it, or I made the decision not because I don't know how. My right. um, thing was I don't know how, so they gave me a second chance, and which I'm very grateful, which I'm going to try again and. Um, if I don't, if I don't succeed at this, I'll take what they give me as a great. But I wanted to ask you, Bucky, what are your favorite books? They don't have to be business books to say, but they do have to be a book that you go back to time and time again. So, of course, uh, without without sounding boastful, one of my favorite books is the book I wrote, Tighten the Lug Nuts, because uh, I think it's it's a great leadership book. It's not a business book per se. It's a leadership book, and I think that all of us have concerns about leadership, and all of us are leaders in one way, shape, or form. And I think that, no, to me, some of the greatest leaders in the world don't carry the titles that we think of, CEO or president. They carry titles as teacher for example, and I think, you know, I often tell people that if I asked you who your congresswoman or congressman was or senator was, you may not know who that is, but if I said to you, can you name that teacher that made an impact in your life, everybody stops for a second and says, oh, yeah, fifth grade, Mrs. So-and-so or Mr. So-and-so. And so teachers have that impactful, you know, way, you know, they make an impact in your life and they leave a legacy. A book that's not my book, obviously, is one that I love reading, Coach John Wooden's books. And Coach Wooden, I think, just has a wonderful set of values and a, and a wonderful approach to leadership. And he, Coach Wooden put together his Pyramid of Success, and his two cornerstones of the pyramid are hard work and enthusiasm. He calls, you know, he calls it industrialness. I call it enthusiasm. But hard work is still an important component of everything you do. And enthusiasm is so important because hard work without enthusiasm is just that hard work that gets old. And if you work your way up Coach Wooden's pyramid of success, you get to the pinnacle, which is competitive greatness. And and I think he says it so well. Competitive greatness is being your best when your best is needed. And so that's whether it's your best is needed as a parent 
whether it's as a teacher, whether as a business person, uh, whether it's the head of the Little League, you know, the Little League team that you coach, you know, your, you know, your competitive greatness is being your best when your best is needed. So those books by Coach Wooden, I think, are just fantastic books. And so for me, I always go back to Coach Wooden. I go back to his books. I go back to the Pyramid of Success. Uh, I, I feel like they ground me, and those are just great opportunities to put leadership practices you know, leadership practice into place and, and understand the relationship between being a good leader and getting your people to feel good about themselves. Well, I presume both those books, including your own book, could be found on Amazon. Yes, yes, they can. Thank you. Yes, yes, they can. And I'll make this public announcement now. If you if you go buy Bucky's book, Please, 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 please leave a review that all that does is help Bucky's book be seen by more people. And the same with John Wooden's book, because all that does is get more eyeballs and hopefully more sales of those books. So please, 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 please leave a review on those books if you choose to do so. Now, Bucky... What is your favorite podcast, if you have a one, that you would recommend to all my listeners? Well, of course yours. <laughs> but that, of, course but that, of course yours. But that aside, uh, I've, a, I've been uh, doing some – I've done – in fact, I was doing it you know, the other day. I was taking a look at it, and I have over 50 podcasts that I've done just in the last you know, six months. So we really have gotten some really good – you know, some, some great podcasts and some great interviews. But there's one I really enjoy, and it's uh, WMAP, and it stands for World's Most Amazing People. And it's done by a gentleman by the name of Casey Armstrong, the K and the letter K and the letter C, Armstrong. And Casey Armstrong uh, is an individual uh, who has had to share challenges but has worked his way to where now he has a podcast that's in over, I think it's over in 18 to 20 countries now, and it's great listenership. But he, he interviews people who have, have taken themselves from certain situations and improved themselves or helped themselves or done things to help other people. And, you know, I, I like that. I like, you know, in, in the book I talk about leaders understand that simple acts of kindness go a long way. And for me, this podcast, when, when I listen to his, the interviews he does and the people he interviews, and I was honored to be you know, interviewed by him uh, because in my way, in my life, it's simple, right? I mean, I, you know, it's not like, you know, I, I, I did some miraculous thing compared to some other folks who either, you know, worked their way through an addiction or had a, an ailment that they, you know, that they were able to work their way through. I mean, while I had a successful career, I look at these individuals as just heroes, just super people who've done some wonderful things. So I was honored to be on the show, and his thought was, you know, I helped some some other people through mentoring and through leadership. But um, very flattered to be on the show. But I love listening to his guests. So it's uh, it's called WMAP, and it stands for World's Most Amazing People. And he has some of them, some amazing people on there. He had a uh, World War II uh, concentration camp survivor on, and you listen to his story, and it's just amazing how the perseverance and how uh, he overcome so many so many uh, obstacles during his time in the concentration camp. So that's one that I, I, I thoroughly enjoy doing, and I like participating with. And so it's WMAP, and it's the uh, world's most uh, amazing people. And it's Casey Armstrong. Uh, it's his it's his podcast, so that's one I would recommend if you have a chance to uh, take a listen to. And you guys, I just subscribed to it as Rocky was speaking of it. I looked it up in my podcast player, and yes, it is W M A P. And I think Casey also has a Periscope channel. Um, if I'm thinking of it's like Casey. He has a Periscope channel. I did not realize he has a podcast as well. How yeah. cool is that? But yeah. um, Casey is very well-known on Periscope, not so well-known in the podcasting. Well, although now he, now he is, thank you, Rocky, for mentioning <laughs> one of your previous interviews. 
and thank you for getting me hooked on another podcast, and thank you for saying mine is terrific as well. I really appreciate that. And now, if you had to be educated by anyone, who would it be and why, and what would you ask them? Well, you know, there's someone I always wanted to talk to, and it's interesting because it's, you know, um, it's one of those questions like if you had a chance to have a cup of coffee with someone, who would it be? And for me, not a religious figure, it would be George Washington. And it's interesting. People always, you know, assume it's because he was the first president. And so for me, I, the thing I would ask George Washington was when you think about the the winter at Valley Forge and here you are, you're out of ammunition, basically, you're not paying the troops. And and it, the war had just been had drug on. It was a difficult war, and we, were, you know, the Americans were fighting the world's greatest army at the time, the British. And for me, it was always I would have loved to sat there with a cup of coffee with uh, General Washington and just asked him, "How did you? What did you say to these individuals to keep them fighting, to keep them loyal, to keep them moving forward with you, even though it was cold, they were hungry, they weren't getting paid, and they were." out, you know, out manned, uh, you know, maybe it's not the proper term, a man, but they were out staffed or, you know, and to me, I would love to know, you know, how did he get through those days and what were the things that he told them to keep them motivated? Because, you know, life is full of those ups and downs and, and you know, and one of the things that I learned personally through my career was don't ever let your highs get too highs and your lows get too lows, right? If you can stay within that you know, kind of 60 to 80 percent range where, you know, when something good happens, you're not running around slamming the football and high spiking it and over celebrating. And when things really get rough, you know, you've got to be that person that's the kind of the, the calm in the storm, the leader that, you know, has that smile It helps people through a difficulty because everybody's watching what you do as a leader. So for me, it's that don't let your highs get too high and your lows get too lows. And and so I would always wanted to ask uh, General Washington, what did you tell those troops to gain, you know, to keep their loyalty, to keep them fighting, to keep them to be part of it? So that would be someone I always would would want to have that question asked. And where can people find you? And of course, we'll have all of this information in the show notes you guys so in in case you're driving and listening to this or in case you're at the gym listening to this and can't write down tighten the lug nut Rocky's book will have all of that information in the show notes and where can people find you Rocky so uh, I can be found on our website is www and it's the number three and then the word 60, S-I-X-T-Y, managementservices.com. So it's www.360managementservices.com. The difference is the word three, the number, it's the number three, not the word three. Uh, and then it's very interactive. You can, people send me emails, give me some comments about the book. And so I really enjoy that. Uh, I think that's a great way to interact with myself and the, and you also give you a chance to see the members of our team, some of the speeches, keynote talks that I'm doing. I think that's a great way to go. We're on Twitter, Facebook, uh, we're just going on Pinterest now for the book. And as you said, uh, and I appreciate it so much, uh, the book is Tighten the Love Nuts and, uh, it's a, it's a, it's a leadership book. It's not, I would say it's not necessarily a business book, although there's some great business things in there. But it's about being a leader. It's about being a good leader. It's about being that leader that inspires other people. It's those simple acts of kindness. Hello, thank you. Appreciate the job you're doing. Thanks for coming in today. And those kinds of things that set that tempo. And the last thing is about legacy, right? It's about do you leave it a little better place than you found it? Are people better because of the time with you? Are those little leaguers better because they were on your team? Is your business better? Are your customers better because of their interactions with you and your company? And so for me, legacy is always about that concept of did you leave it a little better place than you found it? And for me, that's why I always say, I always you know point out the teachers as great leaders because at the end of the day, you know, think about all the people that they've impacted, all the people that they touched through their years as a teacher, mentor. It's just amazing, right? If a teach, if teachers ever actually ever wrote down all of their students and what their students are doing, you know, that to me would be the greatest tribute because so many of them 
are successful people and success isn't isn't about making money it's success is are you a good person are you that kind of pe- person that someone would want to be a neighbor with are you that kind of person that somebody wants to be friends with interact with you know and and that's that's what that's what you know friendships about it's not about oh i'm you know i'm making x amount of money a year or or success isn't about how much money you make it's you know how good you are as a person well that's a beautiful way to end this interview but before i let you go i want you to ask me a couple questions that you've been interested in asking me well, thank you very much. Well, you know, you got to know a little bit about Rocky Romanella with my background. I would like to know a little bit about you and your background. Well, it's so funny you say teaching because I am soon to be a retired educator, and oh. I have retired from teaching preschool. I gave that up. I let my reins go as of May 2017. I retired from teaching preschool after 11 years, and so now I'm teaching third grade, but I'm fully, but fully walking away from the education field to be a full-time writer and a freelance journalist full-time. Oh, that's wonderful. Well, you know, it's funny. I started when I first went to college. I went, went to college to be a high school history teacher and a baseball coach. And I became a part-time supervisor inside of UPS, and I realized at that moment that, you know, good good leaders are are good teachers. And so I never felt like I walked away from the teaching profession. I just was a teacher in a different way. It wasn't in a classroom. It was in a business setting. So I think that teaching yeah. is really the core uh, you know, core skill that you need throughout life, whether it's, you know, as a parent, you're teaching your children, you know, core values, integrity, honesty, you know, you're teaching them, you know, what it means to be a good person, you know, whether, or in school in a more traditional professional manner as you were as, you know, as a preschool teacher and now a third grade teacher. And I think then as you move into, into the journalism, journalistic side and, you know, into your podcast side, you're teaching you're teaching individuals that way too. So I think there's always a part of you that's a teacher. So I think that's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. There's always a part of me that's a teacher and there's always a part of all of us that's a teacher. So do you have any more questions for me? Yeah. So uh, how long have you been doing this? I mean, you're, you're, you've got some very well thought out, some excellent questions. I, I, I enjoyed my conversation with you, but you have a very, very good skill here. So uh, does it come naturally or did you work at it? Oh, it, uh, yeah, it partially comes naturally. Partially I had to work at it. Um, I've been doing this since in its various formats since 2010, but really I started podcasting in 2010 when I gave up YouTube because a fan literally said, I want to watch, I want to listen to you while I'm multitasking, and I can't do it. I can't do it on YouTube. And to this day, I haven't figured out uh, a way to download the YouTube videos. I, that is not my speed. My speed is podcasting and I think I'm sticking to my speed because that is podcasting because it's easy. I like ease. And so Rocky, before I let you go, one more final question and then I'm going to still let you go. What would what would you tell people to say to the UPS driver who shows up at their door at Thanksgiving and Christmas? Because I know for you guys, that was the toughest season for you guys. And so what would you tell people that, what would you tell my audience that has the UPS driver show up to their door just in general and then we can go into Thanksgiving and Christmas? Well, I'll tell you what, I think it's simple thank you because uh, they are some of the hardest working people I've ever been associated with and and, and caring. I, one of the things that uh, I think is some of the 
one of the greatest you know things that happens to me whenever I tell people I work for UPS. And the thing they always say to me at, at some point, you know, quickly into the conversation is, "Hey, do you know my UPS driver?" And to me, that's such a great oh. question because that that says so much about that that UPSer who cares so much about UPS that that's the brand, right? So the brand of UPS isn't the CEO of UPS or you know the president level individuals. The brand of UPS is that driver who interacts with the customers every single day and does a great job on behalf of our of our company or the former company I work for. So I will tell you, a simple thank you goes such a long way to the men and women who work so hard at UPS. So I would think they would love to hear yes. just a simple thank you. The, uh, yes. the, second thing you have to, the second thing you always have to say to them is be, thank you and be safe. We have a tremendous safety safe. culture at UPS. Be safe. Just be safe. That's the last and thing we ended everything with. And don't blame UPS for your packages being late because of Hurricane Irma and because of Hurricane <laughs> Harvey and Hurricane uh, Maria now and Hurricane Joseph now. Please don't blame UPS. <laughs> they have no, uh, nothing to do with it. They have no, what you nothing can, to uh, do with uh, it. What you, what, what you can yeah. do is take all that energy, instead of being mad at UPS, say a prayer for all the people who are impacted by Irma. Yes, exactly, say, exactly, yeah. exactly. So please don't take it out on the UPS or FedEx or just don't take it out on anyone because that's not cool. <laughs> that's yeah. not cool. And I know the next two days that you're going to be taking it out on the UPS side, and I know that. And I'm yeah. telling you with speaking to a previous UPS driver, do not. Do not take it out on the UPS because they have nothing to do with it. They have nothing to do with it. They're trying to deliver unbroken packages, but sometimes with the weather and sometimes where they're placed, where the storage units are placed is um, right in the path of hurricanes. So please don't take it out on the UPS driver. That's the last thing we want. I agree. I agree. And I appreciate you guys listening to this story. And go check out my Facebook Live. I did the one this morning speaking about Hurricane Harvey and how it's now impacting my life. And if you guys want to help with a project I'm working on, you can go check out Facebook, and then you can donate all that information on how to donate to me is in the show notes, and if you want, you can donate to a PayPal's email, and I'll be sure to use it for the projects I'm working on, but please go check out my Facebook live, you guys, if you want to hear more about the projects I'm working on involving Hurricane Harvey in a very interesting way. You'll be shocked. So please listen and please just say thank you and say yes to new opportunities. And I appreciate you guys, and I definitely appreciate Rocky coming on my podcast and sharing his story, and I hope you guys have a great day. Thanks to you guys.